Welcome back to um, module 8 where we are discussing uh, light atom interaction and uh, we have represented so far the classically we have represented light and we are seeing that when light propagates through the medium uh, actually a certain vector potential is propagating through the medium and uh, vector potential is nothing but the plane wave and that is why we call it light is a plane wave and we have seen uh, the uh, general form of that vector potential which is propagating through the medium because that vector potential is going to um, uh, contribute to the interaction potential which will be introduced in the time dependent Schrodinger equation. So, we will take a look at uh, rigorously take a look at the nature of the vector potential we are if we are familiar with uh, any wave propagate plane wave propagating through the medium it is quite it is actually the same as the plane wave propagating through the medium, but just the names the, the these new terms are we are using these vector potentials. So, when 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 a when I say that light is propagating through the medium it is actually what is going on a certain vector potential is propagating through the medium and it has its maximum amplitude which is given by A naught and uh, it is it is actually varying along this x axis and that direction along which vector potential is changing in the medium it is the direction is this direction is called polarization direction polarization of light and um, this uh, epsilon cap is the unit vector along that polarization direction. So, vector potential is changing along this direction, but it is propagating through the medium like this way. Uh, so, this is the pro propagation direction, propagation direction is given by K naught um, uh, direction. So, that is the that is the basic idea. So, light when light is propagating through the medium we will uh, visualize as if a certain vector potential is propagating through the medium and um, the what we have plotted here is the real part of this which is nothing but A naught this cos omega naught t minus K naught z we often represent a plane wave with the help of this kind of complex notation because uh, subsequent mathematics becomes easy to deal with otherwise this complex does not mean anything we have to convert it to the real part and the real part is going to be the cos part which is the cosine wave. So, vector potential is nothing but the cosine wave. So, light is a is nothing but a cosine wave plane wave in, in, in one dimensional problem. Uh, now, if we look at this what we see is that everything inside this bracket this is called this part is called phase, phase of the uh, plane wave or phase, phase of the light and what we see here is that here the phase is depicted in terms of rotat rotating dial. So, what, it, what, what, what does it mean? I have this maximum amplitude here and now it is rotating maximum amplitude is becoming 0 because it is aligned on this then again maximum amplitude is increasing going to the maximum in opposite direction. So, this phase at this point phase is 0 at this point how do I define the phase? Phase is defined in terms of this rotating dial. You can also define in terms of the length. So, this linear advancement is represented by this rotating dial form. So, at this point because cos everything inside this cos function has to be some kind of um, angle that is why when it is making a linear transform uh, linear um, uh, 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 transition in this in this x z axis which is which is the this is the z axis let us say along this z axis when it is making linear tran transition when it comes here it is actually making pi by 2 phase on the other hand when it comes here it making pi phase when it comes here it making 
3 pi by 2 phase similarly here it is making again the it is making basically pi phase which is nothing but the 0 phase it is repeating. So, what we see here from, from this rotating dial this correspondence between the linear motion and the, uh, uh, and the uh, rotational motion this correspondence suggests that after a certain time the same phase will be repeated if I am looking at this red color it will be repeated if I am looking at this green color it will be repeated. So, the same phase will be repeated and when it when when the constant phase front repeats it means that this total part if I take the time derivative then this is going to be 0 and we if we if we make it 0 the constant for the constant phase front for constant phase front it is 0 which means I have k naught t 0 and dz dt is nothing but the velocity this is called phase velocity which is nothing but omega naught by k naught. So, phase velocity we have got the velocity. So, so we are saying that when light propagates through the medium in the medium we do not know what does it mean by light, but in the medium we will realize that certain vector potential is propagating through the medium and something is propagating through the medium it means that it should have a velocity. What is the velocity it has? It has the phase velocity and this phase velocity is going to be c. Uh, yeah, This phase velocity is going to be the uh, c in vacuum. Now, uh, and, and also we see that this phase velocity is positive which means that this equation is representing the light propagating along the positive z direction increasing this z direction. There can be another solution for the previous equation this equation which we uh, pointed out there is an equation this equation we can have another solution and that solution corresponds to a light propagating along along the uh, negative or decreasing z direction. So, that is also possible we are not taking that solution we are just considering one condition which is light is propagating along the uh, increasing um, z direction and that is why this equation is valid for that particular plane wave. Uh, another uh, uh, concept or, or idea we should clarify here is that if we have um, the lambda which is the wavelength if I have this z plus lambda advancement I call it lambda naught let us say z plus lambda naught advancement lambda is the wavelength of this wave. So, if I have z plus lambda advancement that means I am going to have 2 pi angular advancement. So, this is linear advancement this is linear advancement and as a result I will have this angular advancement of 2 pi. Remember k naught z is representing an angle, but z is representing certain distance linear. So, this part is linear, but total part is an angle and that is why we added 2 pi advancement. So, so, you see that from here to here this is called lambda and this in, in the linear scale it is lambda, but in the rotational scale it is going to be 2 pi. So, 2 pi angular advancement is nothing but lambda naught linear advancement and if it is so then I will have this k naught equals 2 pi by lambda naught and the definition of k naught we get. So, in brief the solution to the combined potential form of the Maxwell's equations in vacuum which is representing the light is featuring a plane propagating wave. So, light what is light? Light is a plane propagating wave and in terms of the vector potential you can represent it in the in terms of field as well 
and similar conclusions you can make. But we are interested in terms of potential and that is why we are representing everything in terms of potential here. So, in terms of potential light, what does it mean by light? Light is a plane propagating wave which is represented by this vector potential of the light. Uh, and in the medium it is actually creating this vector potential which is propagating through the medium. It has an angular frequency omega naught, this is the angular frequency which is nothing but 2 pi nu naught, nu naught is the optical frequency, k naught is the magnitude of the propagation vector, magnitude of the propagation vector is the k naught. So, propagation vector is this one along which the here we are assuming this z direction is the propagation vector. So, and magnitude is k naught. A naught is the maximum amplitude of the vector potential. So, A naught is the maximum amplitude of the vector potential and this, this wave light wave propagates with a velocity V p which is omega naught by k naught. So, V p equals c because we are working on vacuum it is nothing but omega naught by k naught. All these relations we, we get out of uh, this as a consequence of the plane wave. So, similar to the one dimensional problem, now we have to go back to this three dimensional issue and for the three dimensional problem, we get similar results, it is it is it can be represented by this way. So, previously we have represented A uh, Z T equals, this is the polarization unit vector multiplied by A naught ma maximum amplitude e to the power i omega naught t minus k naught z that is the way you have represented and we said that it is actually propagating along the z direction and A is changing along the x direction which is perpendicular to the um, propagation direction. And um, for the three dimensional uh, situation if the position vector is represented by r then this is going to be the dot product of r. And the real solution if we find out the real solution we know that e to the power i theta plus e to the power minus i theta is nothing but cos theta plus i sin theta plus cos theta minus i sin theta this cancels out I get 2 cos theta. So, cos theta what is this cos theta is nothing but real part of e to the power i theta which is nothing but half of e to the power i theta plus e to the power minus i theta. So, this, this is what we have used here if the complex form represented by this then the real form of the vector potential which is important would be represented by this C C is representing the complex conjugate of this part. So, this e to the power minus i theta is the C C of this part that is the way we very uh, conveniently represent C C is the complex conjugate of the complex part. So, this is what the light look like. I have vacuum, I have light propagating through the medium, it means the vector potential is propagating through the medium and I have an atom and this vector potential is going to now interact with this atom in terms of potential. So, we are now ready to uh, look at the interaction of an electron. I will first assume instead of going um, uh, instead of presenting the light and atom interaction we will consider that I have an electron light is propagating through the medium that is why it has created vector potential and this vector potential will interact. So, with the classical description of light given already uh, one may write down the Hamiltonian in the end always to solve any quantum mechanical problem I have to get the Hamiltonian associated with this problem. So, the Hamiltonian of the of an electron which is uh, the electron is assumed to be non relativistic which means that it is its speed or its, its velocity of electron is 
much less than C. When this kind of electron, non-relativistic electron interacting with the light in vacuum, then the Hamiltonian, one can represent the Hamiltonian as this form. Actually general form of the Hamiltonian for a charged particle, so for a charged particle, with Q charge, the Hamiltonian would be 1 by 2 m, m is the mass of the charge particle, then P, that is the momentum operator plus, uh, sorry, minus Q a plus Q phi in terms of vector and scalar potentials one can represent the uh, Hamiltonian, total Hamiltonian. Total Hamiltonian uh, for the interaction, for the, for, the, for the charge particle interacting with uh, the uh, light. Now, it is not an easy task to uh, show how this Hamiltonian, how we get this Hamiltonian. We will just um, uh, for that we have to know classical mechanics, we have to use um, uh, classical mechanical equations, uh, Hamilton equation and we can prove that. But those rigorous methodologies we will not use here, we will just uh, make use of the final form. The final form of a charged particle, we can remember that if a charged particle Q, if a non-relativistic charged particle Q is interacting with light, its vector potential, then the Hamiltonian of the total Hamiltonian would be represented by 1 by 2 m, then momentum operator uh, minus Q a, that is why a comes into the Hamiltonian and then phi uh, comes into the Hamiltonian. And if and for E, because it is an electronic um, uh, particle minus E charge, I have now this is E and this part becomes negative E and that is exactly what I have written here. So, there is a rigorous mathematical derivation to obtain this kind of Hamiltonian, we will just use that final result, we will not show how to get that. One thing is clear here is that Hamiltonian now I have uh, for the charged particle interacting with this or electron interacting with this magnet, uh, electromagnetic field, um, for that Hamiltonian I have Hamiltonian depends on its momentum operator that should be we know, but in addition to that it depends on vector potential and scalar potential in the medium which is originated due to, due to propagation of the, of the light. So, one can um, uh, simplify this um, equation um, uh, by writing uh, this as a square. So, first we are taking this p square, then we are taking this term and then we are taking this term. This is just simplifying it and um, um, because we have already said that certain procedure or certain additional condition we will use to define A. There is an A which is originated due to propagation of light in the medium, but we are going to define A in a certain way. And the gauge condition we have used is that uh, for the Coulomb gauge, we have used A to be divergenceless and phi to be 0. This is the gauge condition we have used. Under this gauge condition or in other words following this particular pathway we try to get the solution because if we if we follow this pathway then we can get a simplified solution. So definitely phi is 0 which means that this term would be 0 from the Hamiltonian and, um, uh, uh, and then we will see what is the consequence of this divergence less A that we will see. The consequence is following, we will be able to write down this to be uh, 
minus h car square by 2m 